What up, this your boy Lil Durk. I'm rocking out with Kodak. You know what the fuck time it is. Let's get it. Yo, what's going on? This is Big Homie Kodak. This is the Big Homie's house. And uh, normally, this is we like to have it a, a, a nice, fun, vibrant environment. But you know, I think today we got to talk about something serious that's affecting everybody in this room right now. That is racism and, and injustice on the hand of the police. And we got a different... We like to have people that fit the demographic or whatever the conversation is. Like like I said, normally it's a, a fun vibe, but we got to take a more serious route. So, uh, of course, we have, uh, the, I guess, the unofficial goals at this, at this point because she's been here <laughs> eight out of the, I mean, uh, how many episodes we is? It's episode 18. She's yes. been out of here. 15 of the 18 episodes. She just <laughs> fucking keeps showing up. I don't even be inviting her some weeks. And she just be, she just be here. Oh, my God. And we should have, baby, she hopping in. Oh, that's yeah. how you got to get it. That's how you got to get it. Okay, that's how you got to get it. Bring your seat to the table. If they don't invite you to it, pull the chair. She's be here. Pull the chair. Fuck it, butter here again. All right, cool. Uh, My OG, the big homie, Dr. Gary White. Yeah, yeah. Good to be here. Excited, man. The legendary. Sitting around, y'all. I'm I'm ready to flow and have a... You you and your homie, the big homie over there. What's going on? Introduce me to the people. Oh, well, you know, this is one of my closest friends, the Coria. So I made sure, you know, when I heard this was going on, I wanted to invite her. And because I know that Coria has been out here the past couple of days marching and out there, you know, demanding justice for our people. So even though it's important for people at home and people on the front lines, everybody's important. I just wanted to, you know, bring her up so she can introduce herself. Thank you. Well, I am DeCoria Green, um, a senior now at Clarkland University from Detroit. Yes, yeah. from Detroit, <laughs> Michigan, majoring in accounting, and I really just got to thank everyone, and especially Marquina, because this is mm-hmm. like a big, this is a big opportunity for me. So mm-hmm. I do want to say thank you. Let's go. Aww. <laughs> so I mean, I'm gonna just open it, open up the table to discussion, because like I said, like normally, uh, butter been here, cash been here every week. We um normally have different segments that that tailor into different topics, but like I said, the 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 topic of conversation is obvious. Um, what do y'all think about everything that's going on right now with the George Floyd and the, the, the protests and, um, across the country? What do y'all think? Marquini, well, you can pop it off. Who's going to take it first? You can, you can pop it off, Marquini. Lord, Dr. White, they ready? No, go ahead. You I'm know they ain't ready, but Marquina, I'm going to I'm, 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 <laughs> Let me say this. Let me say, let me say this before we get started. This is, we don't edit shit. <laughs> okay, we okay. We don't, edit, we don't edit nothing. Okay. And we don't, we, we accept of everybody's opinions. Okay. So, mm-hmm. if you got something controversial on your heart, say it. Like, I mean, the thing is, is that nothing that we have to say should be controversial. I mean, it shouldn't be a fight. It shouldn't be having to be protests all around the world for our government leaders to understand that it's necessary to charge and prosecute police for killing innocent black people, that it's necessary to charge and prosecute police for assaulting innocent black people, because that's who we hear talking about right now. They may do it to other races, but we talking about how they do black people so at the end of the day the reason why this world is in an uproar right now one of them being is because we just had to witness the public lynching you know it's different when we hear about a Breonna Taylor it's different when we hear about um, you know many other names that have gone without a camera actually recording their death we didn't see Trayvon and it's different right now though because we had to witness the public lynching and our people just came off of a serious quarantine isolation so our mental were already on edge so either way Way, prosecute the police everywhere across America where justice needs to be served, period. I love it. I think, mm-hmm. uh, like I said um, before we began this discussion, this is not a protest. These are not yeah. riots. This yeah. is what, this is your in your classic sense of rebellion. Yes. This is an outright, absolute rebellion. Yeah. Because there, it is a rebellion, we're going to have riotous behavior. Yeah. We're going to have yep. it, looting. I don't agree with it, but yeah. I understand it. Exactly. Um, all of this is within the confines of what happens when um, when you have a nation of people mm-hmm. that have uh, been brutalized historically since the day we got here. Yes. And so we are now at the point in terms of what we're doing and what we're engaging in. Um, it's not a call to get us to calm down. Yeah. It's not a call to... To get us to um, um, to do it, to protest the right way. Yeah. Um, that's not the conversation of who they really need to be talking to. Hello. It's the institutions and the government. It's the administrators. It's the police recruiters. It's mm-hmm. the police trainers. Mm-hmm. It's the supervisors. Hello. It's yeah. the coworkers. Yeah. 
It's the chiefs. Yeah. It's everyone who clo who turned their head to a blind eye. It's the the young men and women who are interested in law yeah. enforcement, but they were bullied in their youth yeah. and they had all these mental health issues. Yep. And the only way that they could find their womanhood or manhood is to go into law enforcement uh, yep. and then take it out on someone who yep. was a victim. So yep. now we are here. Say the same thing. So that's where that, that's where we are. So for me. What we are seeing right now, and, and until this country understands, you all have to understand this now. It's not just this country. Yeah, yeah. I, we're watching people all over the all world over. now mm -hmm. who are Brazil, protesting against and why black is, injustice. And why yeah. is that? Because <laughs> these other countries have watched yeah. United States yeah. um, 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 crucify and blast their mm -hmm. countries mm -hmm. for the rebellions and mm -hmm. the fighting and the outbreak that is taking place as people or oppressed people in those countries up, up, did an uprising against their oppressed country and now we're here yes and so now we're doing it but the truth of the matter is is that we've reached the point where we have to understand is that when you when you kill someone yeah when you injure someone yeah. when there's an injustice mm -hmm. i'm just saying that now we're at the point with your generation mm -hmm. that we need to understand that there's a direct correlation now you do this all hell gonna break loose. Right. You don't want all hell to break loose. Don't and do this. Exactly. It's just that simple right now. Period. So no strategic plan needed. No heartwarming stories. It's just understand that shit gonna break loose. Mm -hmm. You do this, all hell break loose. You don't want all hell break loose. Then take care of it. I think that's just where we are right now. And that's what it is. And can I say something because what you just said? You know, right now, it's a shame that the people in Minneapolis, y'all can't even do performative politics right. I mean, the whole world is burning down and y'all can't even give in and charge these officers to the worst extent. At least you... What do you think the worst extent is? I mean, to the worst extent, is, as I mean, like, charging First them degree. to the highest degree. First degree murder, yeah. all now, of the officers one, involved. One of the Third things... A lot. One, yeah. of, one of the things I've learned, like I was, I'm a criminal justice major. That was the very third minimum. degree was. I think that was too low. I think third, third degree is kind of the same. It's like accidental, I think. Yeah. Uh, second degree, which they bumped it up to today, would have been more in line with what I think was deserved. First degree is intentional. intentional. That's yeah. it, it's premeditated and intentional. So I think it was. It could have been because they say they knew each other beforehand. Yeah, it looked but, real but I, intentional to me. Yeah. I think. I think. Yeah. If, I think yeah. if I'm a prosecutor, yeah. I think yeah. if I'm a prosecutor, I want to hit him with something that's going to stick. Because you have, it, when it's first degree, you got to. That's like me waking up in the morning and say, "I'm about to go kill this dude." Specifically, you, whoever you is. Like I, I wake up in the morning, I'm about to kill you. So you want to hit them with something that's going to stick. Now, with everything that they, that the more information that comes out, like they said, they worked at the same club. They beat they knew up each in other. The car before I didn't I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah there was a video. video. They beat the him up in the car. And the police before. officer is literally yes. just sitting okay. there. Okay. And that video <laughs> just came out a few days ago. So, so they with beat him up with in the car information like first. that. Yeah. It's like, that's first degree. That's premeditated. Yeah. And, and it's not just that, that. It's a hate crime. crime. Right. It's a hate crime. He sat there with his Period. arms in his hand. It, even when they when they checked his pulse, he still sat there. After they said that he he's not breathing anymore, you still sat there. And when the EMT came, they didn't try to save him. And 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 what people also need to realize is the time span that this all occurred in: eight minutes and forty six seconds. Eight minutes and 46 seconds of having your, your breathing obstructed. I don't know if you guys have ever swum before, but I've been underwater for five seconds. Right. And felt like I was about to die. <laughs> mm, seriously. Now, yeah. we're talking about eight minutes and 46 seconds of With this guy saying, mm -hmm. I, I can't breathe. Right. He screamed, Mom. Yeah. Screaming. Screaming for his dead mama. His mom died on that same day. Years, like two we years have two ago. years prior, but it was screaming for his So, so the truth of the matter, and I'm telling everyone, and and this is not an isolated incident. We're right. saying that this Hello. year is a continuation because the question is, how many isolated incidences do you need before you say there is a pattern, and how many patterns do you need before you see that there's a trend? Right. And so the truth of the matter is, which is why. I think at, we are at this point in, in this country when these things occur, then all hell needs to break loose. It's yeah. the only way, the only way. To, mm. to, to correct it. Now, what troubles me, the other thing that troubles me a lot about this particular case is the young lady who recorded it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's been getting death threats. Wow. 
and she's been getting not, and, and that not only death threats people like black people are saying well, why didn't why didn't you why intervene why didn't you do anything like, no, what she, she, like she's no, a 17 year old yeah, you want her to fight knives against guns but, like that's but, what but people but don't all, but the interesting thing about trauma Mm-hmm. Especially secondary trauma, which is yes. what we're seeing right now, yeah. meaning that you you didn't experience it, but you were exposed it, yeah. you saw it. So mm-hmm. what happens with secondary trauma, there's a whole lot of Monday morning quarterbacks yeah. and then you're traumatized. So they're telling the 17-year-old, you should have intervened. But everything happens when we witness this stuff. So you you you, you have the emotional side of it yeah. where you, you're having nightmares and, 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 and night terrors and everything mm. going on. You have the physical side of it now in terms of the trauma Mm -hmm. you know you 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 can't sleep um sweats Mm -hmm. nervous fidgety Mm -hmm. you have so many things from emotional psychological Mm -hmm. behavioral cognitive Uh, you you can't even because of what we're seeing even being able to think clearly so so not just not just leaning on her like for the people that have been watching this and subjected to it i'm be honest i haven't been able to do more than i haven't been able to do more to look at the picture I haven't right. been, I haven't been able to watch the video yet. Like yeah. when I saw what happened to Alton Sterling, that still fucks with me. Oh yeah, for sure. Like him getting shot and bleeding out on the sidewalk. Like so for, for the people that that aren't there, but we see this on CNN, we see this on social media. Mm-hmm. Like how do how do we cope with that 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 trauma? Cuz that's that's P, that's PTSD as well. Like seeing people that that look like us being killed and we not we're, for they're no not reason. Seeing, we're not seeing any justice from it. Well, that's the point that I'm, I'm I'm raising in terms of you know one of the most important things that you're doing is number one not watching it. Yeah. You know you you have to understand the media feeds off of this. This is like Christmas to them. Mm-hmm. And so we have to be careful about um, being overexposed to it. And then the other thing is that we have to talk about it. Mm-hmm. And like I said, the most important thing is are recognizing how we are being psychologically impacted. Right. You have to understand if your irrita- if your irritation is up higher than it normally is, mm-hmm. if your ability to think and concentrate is more convoluted than it normally is, then you may very well be suffering from some of these just as it literally happened to you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I got pulled over, um, an officer pulled up to me the other day. Hell, I'm, I'm, I ain't rode dirty since my undergrad years. <laughs> but I mean, but to pull up on the, the side of me and then, you know, and he looks at me and I, I look at him, right? And then he's right looking at tense. me and I'm looking at him. And so he said, why are you looking at me? I said, how do you know I'm looking at you? Right. Because you're looking at me. Because like you're that. looking at me. I like that. You understand me? So he's like, well, you're looking at me. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure interpretation. But the thing is, is that it was very simple. When he said, why, why are you looking at me? And I said, how do you know that I'm looking at you? Mm-hmm. You said that to the cop? Yeah. Period. How, how do you know I'm looking at you? It wasn't in a combative way, but it was in a very intellectual Matter of factly. Well, yeah. you you only know that because you're looking at me. Exactly. So it's where we are, and we're going to be kind of in this state. But the challenge is, is that some of those officers are fathers, their brothers, their cousins, their uncles. They they're all those things. But the challenge is those who are in that system and have become institutionalized. Yes. And when uh-huh. they get to the point where they're so institutionalized, they no longer see themselves as a black man. Then now yes. they, they see themselves in their suits yes. and in their, their <coughs> uniform. Now we got some problems. You know what? I'm, and I'm glad you said this. And, I, and I'm not going to call this brother out, but um, I've re- I re- recently remembered uh, a guy I went to middle and high school with uh, became a police officer. And I remember, you know, you remember people from high school. Mm-hmm. So I remember yeah. he was a real... We, we were cool, but he was like he wasn't like on the in crowd. But now I he made a post yesterday talking about how the people have been making anti police posts, whatever. Da 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 da. And my comment was, you know, I've been knowing you for more than ten years. I've been friends with you on Facebook for more than ten years, and I haven't not once seen you make a comment about how the police are killing black people. Yeah. But when you see people making anti-cop posts, you speak up. You, that's when you speak up because mm-hmm. you feel direct, directly threatened. But not only are you a black man that's a police officer, you have a son with uh, that's going to grow up to be seen black because his mom is white. But he, if you're not black. white, you're black. <laughs> you feel me? So it's like, why haven't I seen you make those comments? He gave me some some shit like, oh well. 
uh, the policy. Da, 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 da. It's like, whatever, man. I'm not really for performative protests on the, on the side of police. We were talking about that earlier. The cops kneeling with the protesters, hugging protesters. I'm not with media. that. I'm not with so, that. So here's my thing. And I've said this before. There's a big difference between who you are and what you do. Right. And when you reach the point that you believe that who you are and what you do is the same thing, right. then you're setting yourself up for failure. Right. So here's what I mean. I'm Dr. White. That's mm-hmm. what I do. Right. Right? But mm-hmm. when I'm not Dr. White, I'm daddy. Right. I'm, I'm and I've seen it. I'm, I'm father. I've right. seen it. I'm, you, you see and if I mean? somebody try your daughters. Well, then I'm, I'm a recovering. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. yeah. a recovering <laughs> Nigga, <laughs> I've heard this before. It's a lecture. Me, that's, me, that's him, a lecture. me and him. Yes, it's a lecture. It's I didn't, lecture. I didn't see it the lecture. I, I was at his house when I heard this. Yeah. And, so, and I believe it because so, you have three three beautiful black daughters, right. and I believe you'll do whatever it takes to protect yeah. them. Mm-hmm. So, so the the difference is is that when who you are and what you do. When you're no longer able to make the distinction, Mm -hmm. then you'll see someone protesting the police and you don't realize that they're not protesting you. They're protesting the establishment of police. But then you say, you know, we are getting mad at this. And the truth of the matter is I'm saying I need you to remove that. And the reason why I need you to remove that is because when you don't have that on Mm -hmm. until you identify yourself, you're no different than me. Right. So the truth of the matter is, is that we're just at the point where, it, with everyone, who you are and what you do has to be separated. Mm-hmm. And here's the other thing. Think about those six officers that just got fired by the APS. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and, and here's the challenge that they have. If being a police is who they are, mm. now they just got fired, then mm. who are they now? Mm. Yeah. Nobody. Mm-hmm. Nothing. And they just got charged, but... And I'm looking but, at the picture. It's five, five, five of the five six up. officers are black. You, you and saying? five of them are black. But, Dr. White, do you know what's so interesting about that? Because do you know what people really need to understand about these protests that are going on? Is that this is not just justice for George Floyd. This is justice for every city and country in the world that has had black, innocent people dying at the hands of the police. Right here in Atlanta, Georgia, performative politics. I'm trying to figure out how in two days... Can we can we fire and charge officers for tasing and assaulting two students, which is amazing. That was great work, but very performative because at the end of the day, the same district attorney that decided to charge those officers Mm -hmm. have denied many black families. No, have denied many black families justice for their sons and daughters that have been killed in Atlanta, Georgia, by the hands of the police where no cameras have been involved. And it's not the same type of viral cases. So at the end of the day, if you're going to charge and fire those six officers, we need to be looking into the 130 black mothers in Atlanta who now have to be in a mother's club because their sons or daughters were slain by the police and they don't have justice. So if we're going to put justice there, we need to put justice there too. Yeah. So these marches and these rallies and these protests and this uprising is because our people are tired of having to witness ourselves being lynched, of having to experience police brutality why is it a norm for our black sons to have been beaten by the police? Why is it a norm for, for people, um, for young men in New York to have had a brutal encounter with NYPD? Why is that a norm? And it's not just in New York. It's not just in Minnesota. It's not just here. It's in Paris. It's in Ghana. It's in South Africa. Black people are facing injustice everywhere, and we are tired of not having the complexion for the protection, period. Mm. Respect us and prosecute the police, yeah. period. To that effect, and also I want to, you know, uh, mention a former CAU student, a uh, personal friend of mine, Jamarian Robinson was... Um, yeah. Yes, Jamarian Robinson. I learned about that August from 5th, yeah. August 5th, mm-hmm. tw- 2016. It'll be four years in, um, oh, yeah. Yeah. in, uh, in August that, uh, you know, we came to Clark Atlanta on the same day in spring of 2008 playing football together. So when I heard about what happened to him at the hands of U.S. Marshals, you're talking about, like, shot... Fire, fire, fire! In East Point, Atlanta, 90, Georgia. 90 round, ninety rounds shot seventy six times. Um, like you said, this wasn't a case where there was a lot of viral footage of it. Uh, we just had his mother on Big Facts uh, last week, and um, you know, there we still looking for justice for that. This is somebody who I knew personally, and it really, you really don't, it really doesn't hit home until it happens to somebody you know. Mm. Um, this is somebody who I, like I said, went to school with, school with, went to parties with, and it just like, damn, it's like, you know, it's like. And, and could it happen to me? Could it happen to my brother? 
you know. So it's like stuff like that is like it, it really hits home when it's those situations. So. I mean, to be honest, it hit home for me even when it was Trayvon Martin right. and I ain't never heard of him a day mm -hmm. in my life. Because for the simple fact that I can be murdered at any time, any day, and mm -hmm. if it's a, somebody that has a badge on, they're not going to be held accountable for it. Not even that. Because why are we even fighting for Brandon. justice? It, 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 it interesting? He just got a DUI here last week. Who? Who? Zimmer George Zimmerman? Zimmerman. He's my here. thing is, we got all these... Let me tell you something, my people. Hold up, real quick, real quick, my people. Real, real quick, my people. Because I love my people. Here. Go ahead. Huh? Go ahead, bring it up. Because, you know, I love my people, so I'm going to check my people before I let somebody else check my people. But I want to understand, we got so many gangsters and real niggas Ooh! walking around. Why y'all letting people like George Zimmerman still have face up in here? I'm not I'm not promoting that anybody inside any violence nothing. on We're the land. But if we got all these real niggas, if y'all ready to bust y'all gun at any second, y'all letting the wrong people walk around. And that's what everybody was saying. It's when people people are getting mad because black people or black celebrities are saying stuff against the riot, but it's not necessarily against the riot. It's what you're doing. You're you're buying down your own. Every sister. Every no every no listen. What you're doing to your own thing, and, and you don't even know why you're doing it. Every police officer that have ever done anything to any black person, any anybody that y'all have any grievance around, their businesses are still up. Their families, those police. That's not true. Girl, that I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about targeting. So I'm talking about like personal stuff yeah. in their homes. The police officer that just killed George, his his home fill up. No, but remember that a hundred police officers guarded his him. house. Oh. Since they wasn't scared okay, of his house. Again, where no, the but remember, they don't care. no, but remember though, in Minneapolis, no, the gangsters are starting to come out now. Where? Because you if be you smart, though, girl in Minneapolis, like, no, no wait, no, but but remember that in Minneapolis during the protest, before they burned down that precinct, the cops were shooting at the protesters from the roof. The protesters dispersed and came back ten minutes later. If that ain't gangster. I don't know okay, what so, is. Okay, there so, men in Texas yesterday on them horses marching, protesting, going against the police. Yeah. That's 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 gangster. But what that's I'm talking gangster. about is the stuff that happened now. What was going on? What were the gangsters doing yeah. when these people are walking around? Like you said, Jim, Zimmerman right. down here. What was the gangsters yeah. doing? Yeah. doing yeah. drive-bys? Yeah. Why he haven't got sniped yet? Right. Why why he was allowed to walk out of court? We're not saying he's gonna be sniped. Yeah, we're not saying. But y'all know what we're talking about. They know what we mean. Did they charge him for the DUI? Yeah, he was he was in he was in full. Oh, y'all know? He might be. How, how did he make it out? That's what I'm saying. Not, again, I'm not saying that nobody was supposed to snipe him, but where, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. People people hitting licks and drive I see what you're saying 100%. I see what you're saying 100%. Are still living. living. Right. I see what you're that's saying 100%. The only reason why I did, you know, put my face when you said black celebrities, because I'm a little mad at them right now. No, that's what I am no, messing with no, the black that's celebrities right now. Because, because let's, a lot of Trina, them. Let's get, let, let's, Trina, let's, 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 let's get, let's get into it. I know there's a lot of black celebrities going off, but I'm mad at a few of them. But Lizzo, but, but it's, Trina, they've been doing but, it's, but it seems no, like, no, no. It seems like a bunch of like the, the oh, it seems like a bunch of the, the the celebrities this past weekend have just like completely dropped the ball. Like from Desi Banks to um, B, uh, B Simone. Well, I don't know exactly Tokyo what they Jets. had to do. She wow. knows she messed up though. That's Tokyo Jets. Artist. You know, like wow. when you when you chill, we kicking with your people, and you say you might say something problematic. She said something problematic on camera. She was hitting, but, a, hitting she a friend was in the face. She was choking one of her friends and, and said, said, "I about George Floyd, Joey." But that's not. We never said, "Oh, I trade by Marty." We never said it's nothing just like so that. So y'all had, had an expectation that they were gonna be something other than. Did, did y'all have an expectation? Everybody that, did. That, I wasn't telling them to use a platform. That's what I'm saying. Did you yeah, have an expectation problem. because of their celebrity? I that didn't have Because of this, that they were gonna rise above how they normally think and behave. I mean, You're I right. didn't have a certain expectations, but it's just like they have you a certain platform. You don't expect them to do it that yeah, bad. Yeah, but it's like we're the same color. Like, I, like for example, I have a lot of followers on Instagram. So, of course, I'm going to promote black businesses. I'm going to promote the movement. Even like a share or repost is just like... It's the right thing to do as a human being, as right. a black person. And right. so, therefore, you're known for that. And that's the point that I'm saying is that because you're known for that, but if you do something outside of your norm, mm -hmm. then it's going to be a, a surprise and a challenge. And I'm saying with some of the young celebrities that you all have just identified, all I'm simply saying is, but did they behave outside of their normal character? Mm. 
Mm. I mean, so if you I mean, were, there are definitely so you, some that if, have in a positive way. So you might have hoped that because of this that they would have a heightened sense of morality, a heightened sense of social ethics, right. a heightened sense of vocabulary. You would have expected all of those things, but that right. might be on y'all for thinking that they were going to behave mm. any different. With, with, so, what, yeah. with what Trina said today from somebody who's actually from the city of Miami, grew up like from the slums of Miami and came up and made something of herself, for her to refer to people that are doing the looting and rioting as animals. animals. Yeah. Jesus like, Lord! She said that. Yeah, it's like, yeah. really, why? Like Animals from like, the zoo. But do y'all want to know something, though? What this is showing us is that I don't think that people necessarily expected these celebrities to act like Martin Luther King. But it's the fact that even though we didn't expect nothing from you, now you are now you are just blatantly being disrespectful and ain't nobody even asked for your opinion. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, ain't nobody even expect you to come out here and do nothing and then you ended up disappointing us either way and even and like you know? and and to the, the fact that like you know i don't y'all know who santana is be with the city mm-hmm. girls like he, he the what he yesterday. did what, what happened oh he I was out there I what did he do because i seen him out there he, he was out there he, he, was, did, out there while he, he was, was out there yesterday in he front did, of the bus he, he had thing. he had a a stage protest photo shoot where he, and then when it didn't go he had an all lives matter sign in the back which was like Wait, huh? that completely oh, i didn't know that part yeah he had an all lives matter sign he he said he got on Instagram saying, "Well, we paid. We had to pay for da da da. We had to pay for clothes. We had to pay for poster boards. We had to pay the photographers. Like you didn't have to do all that. It's oh yeah, but then we go out. We it's not saying you just go out. And then I mean, when that when, and and, and not, oh wait, there's more. When when that fell through, he deleted the post and he uploaded another one of him twerking to Tupac. Changes. Yeah. So there we go. So it's like... Is he behaving outside of how, how he normally behaves? No, no he's, he's not. So, actually, the, he's so, really the, not. I, so the criticism, I'm, I'm on the same page with y'all. The criticism I'm making is We expected too much. Is that, yeah. Well, no, not even that. I think what I'm he, saying is that... Literally, are they? Uh, w- what I'm saying is that when the social media and um, if, if, I'm, if I'm the oppressor and I need to figure out how to... To, 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 to maintain y'all and put y'all in check. More importantly, if I need to figure out how to divide y'all, then mm-hmm. I need to do some shit that's going to cause some divi- d- d- divisiveness. Mm-hmm. So guess what? So I'm going to show this. I need you mm-hmm. because I know you like to call people animals. So I need you to speak mm-hmm. so you can say they're all animals mm-hmm. and then we all get upset. Yeah. I need you to twerk. Right. right, and then what I need you to do is that I need you to get with some police, and then somebody gonna shoot a video of y'all doing a dance together, right, to show that we all get right. So right. you all have to pay attention to the role right. that media plays in trying to mm-hmm. manage the narrative, mm-hmm. meaning how we see it and how we understand mm-hmm. it, and and even manage how we talk about it. Mm-hmm. So you know. For me, as y'all turned up about um, how we should have handled George Zimmerman, I mean, to me, if this fool up here twerking, I mean, shit, somebody should have snatched his ass mm, up yeah. off the stage. Mm, at the protest. Yeah, if, mm. if she calling somebody an animal, mm. hell, somebody right there on that spot mm. should have checked her. Check. Now, and, I, and, and I will say, because her co host, Trick. Trick Daddy. Trick Daddy. Oh, was he Trick next Daddy. Was yeah, that, yeah. It, was, it was on their morning show. And he was surprised and, and because he was sounding more educated. He, than he was like, and now we know like, Trick Daddy. Trick Daddy says some ignorant shit. And he, and he said, well, he, he says whatever he wants. He made a song about that Snow Holiday song. He made a song about the stuff that's going on now. Yeah, but when he was saying all, when when she was saying all, what she was saying, and you hear Trick Daddy, hey man, you, you, you need to hush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we need to get in. I'm a grown ass man. So it's like he he did say that he has a sense of awareness. He that meant that in the so in that you, moment, thank you. and sense that's really what you all are saying awareness. is that that some of these celebrities you're not expecting them again to suddenly increase in, in their intelligence yeah. or become politically savvy. Yeah. But, I, but, but they it just is got, fair to expect them to be aware. They, exactly. they just got exactly. the hell come out your mouth. But it's their meeting. privilege because we have to, we, we can't talk about celebrities not being aware without also talking about class privilege. Because just like there's white privilege, there are black people who think just because they are in, you know, like higher classes that these issues literally they think it doesn't apply to them. You yeah, know what I mean? Does it so though? Trina said, she said, I ain't scared when the police pulled yeah, me over. Yeah, she was like, you don't be scared? And she was like, no, I, got, I, I use my license and registration. Yeah, that was, that was the wildest like, shit. Like, saying, like, everybody but, 
everybody else you get pulled over, don't use their license and registration. And that doesn't make, but you know what though? We have to talk about that. Disconnected. Yeah, it's disconnected. And we are right now. I am just so happy because a lot of these celebrities that everybody just saying, oh my God, cancel this person, cancel this person. They been not for us. And if they was for us, they would have been acting like they was for us. But who's for us? You know, even people like Kiki Palmer, her actually engaging in the protest. A lot of these celebrities, baby, where are y'all at? These black people are making y'all millionaires and billionaires. A lot of y'all. And in Atlanta, no, but even in Atlanta, Georgia, (laughs) one of the main problems that I had with Keisha Mayer Lance Bottoms going with Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms going on national television and bringing two black men, T.I. and Killer Mike on to denounce black protesters in a city where we originated the civil rights movement? You brought two black men on to denounce black protesters when we're only out here protesting the injustice of black innocent people getting killed. It is no coincidence that when T.I. made the statement, that after T.I. made the statement that um that ATL is a Wakanda. Wakanda. What? Like it's some type of utopia for black people. Like black people are not getting brutalized and beaten and assaulted and killed by the police in this here city. It doesn't make any sense. Oscar Kane, Jamarion Rodgers, Robinson, Keisha Lance Bottoms, this is who Atlanta, Georgia is marching for, is protesting for, is rallying for, because there are district attorneys in your city that are not bringing these officers to justice. Point blank, period. Prosecute the police. So we're saying Atlanta's not Wakanda. Atlanta is not Wakanda. It is not. What is Wakanda? Wakanda would be explained as a utopia for black people. In a utopia for black people, there wouldn't be. be First of all, what's the... And then the... The financial difference, I'm pretty sure there's a bigger word for that. Talk about if you know the wage gap I think is I think it's even bigger than that. But the financial disparities within the community here in Atlanta, ten minutes down the road from where you have homeless people struggling, begging for their life. I mean, ten minutes down from that road you have million dollar mansions. You got you got you got million dollar I got, everything. I got some but I got some better I got, I got road, some better than that. The disparities put, let me put this billion dollar stadium. This billion dollar stadium mm. is surrounded with in the middle of the hood. Every, the poverty, low, raise poverty, the mm. and then what? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase the cost of everything around here. You know how much the, 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 the apartments in Castleberry? The apartments right next to Clark Atlanta. You know, come that, on now. Talk about it. What are the apartments? Them, them what apartments is expensive for at least a two bedroom. We talking about they paying at least like nine hundred to twelve hundred dollars a piece. Right next to Clark Atlanta. What apartments? So eighteen hundred twenty-four thousand. But what apartments? Yeah. I don't know. But what apartments? I think it's, I think it's right Casper. No, but haven't they just been built? They, they just built. No, they yeah. just built. No, no, no. Right yeah, there by the they just built it. Uh, yeah. Right oh, there by the parking lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Talk about it. But you would been, think that they're there. supposed to be affordable for college students. They they aren't affordable at all. But let's talk. If we're gonna talk about that, because what this is what this is bringing up is bringing up the issues in our community that we really need to discuss. Number one, if we're gonna bring up how they're gentrifying, we need to talk about our community gaining ownership before two apartment buildings were able to be created on the campus of the Atlanta University Center whether it's jurisdiction or not you know how they play with all of the feet and square foot and stuff it's right there on our campus where there is major housing crisis why why is it an elderly home why are there two, why is it Martina, two apartment I'm glad, buildings I'm, I'm glad why is that. it for elderly people because when I when I why? when I first I was there when I, I think I was there we when I, they first that. started building that and I I was like, oh, they about to get some new dorms. Like, right when nope. I graduated. See, you should own that. Morehouse it should wasn't. own that. Spelman should own that. Agnes Scott College owns the apartments around their school, and they house their students and professors. Did y'all know that? I 15 did. minutes down the road, Agnes Scott owns the community around them. Agnes Scott has, like, an, like a, I, I believe they have, like, a 60% black population. So, either way, at the end of the day, we need to start as HBCUs. We need mm. to take a bigger responsibility. Of door. educating, empowering, mm-hmm. and taking ownership of the communities that we are in. We cannot, it, it is not acceptable anymore just to be at an HBCU, just to be a professor at an HBCU, or just to be an HBCU. We need to take ownership yep. of our communities. We need to empower.
empower our students to be government leaders in a place where we don't just need black faces in high places. We need black interests being represented. Yeah. Right. We need the, we need there to be somebody to be speaking and going hard. We need there to be multiple somebodies mm -hmm. to be the people at the table before a Mercedes Benz is built in the hood. We need that. And at the end of the day, our HBCUs need to take that responsibility as historical black colleges and universities. We were built in times like this. Yeah. So right now, they should be, and all these professors should be out here like Dr. White. Where are our professors at at these protests? Yeah. Wasn't HBCUs made in these type of times? Dr. White was just at a protest. Come on, Dr. Uh, Dr. Bass, like you know I saw Dr. Bass out there. So at the end of the day, where are our educators that are in these HBCUs claiming to, claiming to be building these black leaders? We want to see y'all at the forefront. Professor Hightower, I seen him out there too, yeah. but our professors should be the ones yeah. leading us into these protests. So, posting on social media is not enough. We, right. We've done that. We've done also, too I, many retweets. And, 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 and I'm, and I'm glad you said that. I feel like yesterday's uh, Blackout Tuesday was really performative because I saw a lot of people that was doing that yesterday get back to business as normal today. Yeah. Like, it was a good look for the PR companies to do whatever they did. And some of the, some of the, the big companies out there are doing their part. But, like, it was real easy for a lot of people to just hit send to story on a bunch of their posts. They didn't post nothing on their main page because they didn't want to mess up the brand. But they're going to put that little black square on their we post. We were just like, talking about that. Yeah, it's, we it's were. Too clear that's, to ask that's, to your story. That's yeah, enough that's activism for trend. today. Yeah. Raci racism defeated. Yeah. Black square. So <laughs> one thing we absolutely clear is that when we move, um, as we progress through this, and we we when we get out of the reactionary phase, right. and then we hit the responsive right. phase and and the rebuilding phase, that you know all of this, if 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 we don't see the necessary change in administrations and in governments, then you know for me, I think the most important thing is that you you all this is like the Nat Turner effect. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. see what happened after Nat Turner. Um, and, and and pledge that that engaged in that rebellion, and they went from plantation to plantation, killing yep. everyone. Mm. What happened is that it created a fear mm -hmm. in the nation mm -hmm. that every slave had the capacity and the capability yep. of doing it. Yep. And so the fear yep. was yep. overwhelming because yep. what happened is that the enslaver was no longer able to make a distinction yeah. between the, 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 the enslaved for which they've had psychological and physical control over and the slave who was just simply waiting in the wing for his or her mm. opportunity to launch an uprising. So they passed several codes in mm. laws uh, mm. to, to deal with that. Well, that reality is here right now. Yeah. Is that we are reaching the point that they must understand mm. that we, everyone, from the most conservative to the most wealthy to the poorest, everyone, we all have the capacity and the capability when it's time to launch a rebellion that we rebel. Mm. And, and that's where I am because I'm telling you all, I want us to even stop calling this a protest. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a rebellion. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. within the rebellion, there is protest yeah. and there is riotous behavior. Yeah. But we have to call it a rebellion yeah. mm -hmm. because a rebellion yeah. is an uprising yes. against an unjust yes. system. Yes. Protesting is just one of the things yes. that you do with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Because what I'm saying is like in 1992 when we were in undergrad and we were protesting, yeah. you know, Talk we about called it. it we called it the Rodney King riots. And where was you Since at when, in 1992? I was right in the San Francisco, Oakland Bay Area. Come on so now. We were engaged, and my wife, the other Dr. White, your professor, uh, and she, my girl. her, and that group, they were right here in the AU Center mm. in, in, um, in grad school. So the point and the reality is, is that following the Rodney King riot, it was a up, it was a, yep. a rebellion. It was an, and that's what we did. Yep. And so everyone, they declared martial law in the uh, the Bay Area. Yeah, they, they declared do the curfews in yeah. the in the, in the, in the Bay Area. We've seen this before. You know, all this all this was put in place. Yeah. So none of this is new. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. When Rodney King was assassinated, the same thing happened. Yeah. Yeah. But then they start saying, you know, we have anarchists and we have looters, yeah. and then all the attention starts going to this. And I'm saying to you all, hell, I'm. All that shit is a part of a yeah. rebellion. Yeah. yeah. So, so when, you All see, when we see the people putting this much emphasis on the people that are doing the rioting and the looting, what did y'all take on that? Because we saw, like, the first night in Atlanta, they went and hit Buckhead hard. They hit uh, Phipps. They hit Icebox. They hit the high-end stores. They hit the Gucci store, the Dior store. So when y'all see that happening, 
a lot of people don't think that needs to happen in, in whatever's going on right now. A lot of people well, are against the, the, the looting aspects of the... Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you, because I'm a little old, so I'm going to disagree with some of y'all, but it's cool. No, no, I said again, I do not support the looting, but I 1,000% exactly. understand it. Exactly. Y'all, Thank y'all, you. It's, it's bound to happen. So what so you mean you're going to disagree with us? What, what you no, about I'm the, No, I'm just trying to... You know, I, do, you I do the nonverbal. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to see where y'all at. But the truth <laughs> of the matter is, is that I understand it. I'm saying it's all a part of it. Yeah, yeah. It's all yeah, a part of it. That's fucked up. No, and that's my problem. You, some stuff, you just got rallies. If yeah. They, if, it, if it was left up to the... the, the oppressors and the administrators, uh-huh. Uh-huh. those who are the reason why we're doing this, uh-huh. we would have some civil rallies yeah. and some guest speakers. Yeah. From, from and then eight, we were only from six from, to eight. From six to eight. Right. And, and it then, would have right, with that. And that's what we would do. But I'm simply saying yeah. is that you got to have, you, you got to have that. Now, here's another reality. Right. Is that our, our uprising and our rebellions would not be a success without having some outright fools. As Hello. And, so, and, and hello. so you Some need to you need to you need to you need your and y'all the, the work with me. Talk on this. about it. You need your scholars and your intellect yeah. to write about it yeah. and talk about it. And yeah. I'm saying the full pendulum. You need your scholars and yeah. your intellects to write about it and talk about it. You uh-huh. need your uh, your organizers mm-hmm. and strategists to strat and then you need them fools mm-hmm. who ain't got shit to lose. Who ain't got nothing. Most of them ain't even they're, our color. And they ain't gonna go out there. No, it's, it's, right. it's, we gotta watch right. color though. We Mar- gotta watch color. Got so we gotta do it. We gotta do it. So, uh, so you have to have. All of that yes. at all the time. And what do I tell my students sometimes? I'm going to tell you. I say, I don't care. Oh, y'all, you know, you, you got your degree now. You got your, <laughs> you got one more year or so. On. Yes. Got, so here's our reality. Never become so intelligent. Yep. So scholarly, yep. so well off, yep. that you have lost within you your yep. ability to act a fool. Yep. You lose your ability to act a goddamn fool, then you when, when the time comes where the only response that co- is called for right. is the ability to act right. a fool, and you have denied or repressed that within right. you, then you got a problem. Right. Act, act the fool in my default setting. Wait, no, and, yeah. and no, Dr. White, no, we have to touch on what you said, because that's my problem with people who keep denouncing the looters. My thing is, yo, we could talk about that later. We could talk about black businesses later, right now. First of all, these black businesses, these black business owners that got a problem. So let me tell you, how you gonna run your business if the police kill you and, and then nothing happens to them for it? How you gonna run your business if your children get shot in the street like a dog, just like Mike Brown mother had to see him? Are you speaking how about did, the people who got their businesses messed up? No, I'm talking about anybody that's speaking against black business being looted, period. Anybody that's speaking on business. Right. Well, but I will say that that is, now that is a little different. It's, it's, it's no, 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 let it finish report. Because the only thing I was saying is just that, because it's kind of, because my thing is just like, y'all so worried about black businesses, baby, we got to live to have a business. Right now, we don't even have the right to live in America. We don't even have the right to live in this world. So y'all so worried about the businesses right now, baby, we can't even live in it's. There's a difference between people who are, who are posting about the protesting and, you know, you know, yeah, tell the looters they're not doing a thing. I'm not supporting the looting at all. I I do not support any black businesses being teared down. I do not support that. But I do understand why it is happening. And what I charge everybody that has a problem with looting in black neighborhoods and that black people don't have enough resources, then how about you call up your state representatives, call up your city council and ask them what resources do they have immediately available to help gain access in those communities for so people can have those resources in places where black stores or or, you know, people where black people have to go to for groceries and stuff are shut down. My thing is stop complaining about looting going on because you know why it's happening. And that's disrespectful to me. I feel like that's disrespectful to me. And that's where I stand firm on it. Because at the end of the day, none of this would be happening if George Floyd was not lynched on national television for eight minutes and 46 seconds. None of this would be happening if police were brought to justice in this world for brutalizing and killing innocent black people. None of this would be happening. So don't talk to me about black businesses. Don't talk to me about Target. Don't talk to me about no businesses unless you're talking to me about how we need to be prosecuting the police. Let's handle that later. Or just don't talk about it with me. No, so no, no. A, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, you can finish. No, please, go ahead. Well, I don't agree with that because 
You don't, thing, you don't agree with what? I don't agree with not not caring that people are... are, are no, baby, I'm saying right now, you don't care about it right now. You don't no, want to talk about it right saying. now. So what did you say? No, we're saying that that's not what's important right now. Point blank, period. It is important, though, to some people who have a... If I have a business, these black people have worked hard for their business, and it's not even just about their business. It's the fact that you're you're some people are saying people have different reasons on why they're out there some people are saying we're doing this because they tore down black wall street they did this some people have different reasons so they tore down black black wall street you're going to go to your sister's business the girls nikki and, uh, and it's the not nikki right and them that not that that went to spell me their businesses she recorded i watched her store she recorded these black men running out her store with these shoes and all her clothes out of her store everything busted down so i'm protesting with you she's on there protesting black lives matter and i come back and my store is busted up by my people that does matter sis that it's a matters. problem but it right now the, so the, the, the bigger problem is the police like that's a problem too okay sis it's a problem too but it's just not a big one they know her business and even if they didn't know the fact that y'all were in there is that has nothing to do with george floyd you were stealing it has nothing to do with it sis no 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 you don't agree i don't know I will say though that you know we are we have seen some things that are are different now he, here's a reality uh, again it because it doesn't take away from the p- point that I'm raising is that you know a rebellion is going to contain all those the challenge with when we talk about having some fools um, is that fools are going to do what fools are going to do. And it's not and, right. And, and, and none of it. But the same thing let me, uh, uh, The same thing on, on this end, because you had some scholars who are going to be some intellectual looters. Yeah. And they're going to look at an opportunity to do the same type of destruction in the writing and the commentary and the language that the, the looters are doing. I am going to say, though, thank God, hopefully for them too, that these people have insurance. Because yeah. the insurance is going to cover what needs to be covered. And so, sadly, but sadly but, though, no, no, a no, lot no, of let, black, let me, let me black business point. doesn't have insurance, so, unfortunately. So what I'm saying right now is that the amount of energy and time that we give to what the fools have done in terms of... And I'm just saying that. I don't yeah. mean that. I'm, I mean, again, because I'm saying every movement has to have those right. things. So I'm just saying those folks who are not conscious, who don't have a sense of uh, rebellion, it is just literally an opportunity. And what I'm simply yeah. saying is that all of this, no one... No one is necessarily off limits. Now, I will say that one of the things we did see in the 90s with the Rodney King riots, we, we, you know, there there was a time that people was taking spray paint and spray painting black-owned business. And that's Um, what those people that's um, complaining should do. You're so mad about it. I don't know. But then they protect the world. I don't know the degree to which it will make a, a difference, but I will say that... Certain times we did do that, but what what we've been witnessing, I don't know to the degree to which that would matter, but it would make some degree of a difference. My concern is, my concern is that we not give that amount of energy to the don't make it the main everything. focus. Right the now, shouldn't be and the main so focus. Exactly. allow for Thank me to you. say, damn, I, yeah, I don't, I don't want to lose Thank the original you. point. Yeah. So yes, that's, that's, what, that's, that's, what, that's what I was I, trying I, to explain. This is what I'm saying. Watch this. Allow for me to say, damn, y'all, I hate that your business got burned down. I hate that you were successful enough to get your business right here in this high income place, in this um, this hot zone. That you know, the beautiful thing about Centennial Olympic Park in here is that Centennial Olympic Park is just Designed to do exactly what it is. It's the center and the focus point of Atlanta. People come to Atlanta. We're telling everybody to go visit Centennial Olympic Park. So when you have a rebellion or a protest or anything that takes place, then guess what? Meet me at Centennial Olympic Park. Right. So everything is happening around here because that's what that thing was designed to. Mm-hmm. Right. So the challenge that we run into is that a lot of businesses and things in that regard for it, as it relates to downtown Atlanta or mm-hmm. any central focus. That's where the protests are going to happen. So you're going to have a, a lot of casualties, right? right exactly. We're going to call, in a war, we call that friendly fire, right? right. So th- th- that that destruction of some of those businesses, those black-owned businesses, is a matter of friendly fire. But we have to even be careful just because they're black-owned business. Just what I'm saying. Hello. Every black person is uh, is um, you know, info is info. conscious and, and an activist. Mm-hmm. You know, I still get to maintain that um, um, that um, that same rule with black-owned businesses. Mm. I get to say, 
Yes, you get the label, and I don't know nothing about these sisters, but I get right. to say, yes, you get to rock that label of a black-owned business, but then guess what? How have what are you black doing? Folks? What are you doing what for the black you? community? That's what I think a lot of people were saying about the black-owned business. Like, okay, Spaces. they might be black-owned, but what are you doing? Like, why didn't mm-hmm. we know that you were black-owned? Yeah. Like, what are you doing for your community? How am yeah. I to know that you're black-owned? Mm-hmm. For example, I can't think of her name, but I know she has the nail shop. A lot of people knew that it was her nail shop. Mm. I guess because of what she's on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Yeah. But it's still like, you know, if I got a restaurant, right. you're going to know I'm black on because I'm giving back to my community. Shout right. out to Pinky because she does a great job. Yeah, that's right. what I'm saying. So people, oh, yeah. people, exactly. people yeah. would not touch yeah. Pinky yeah. black on restaurant because hey, they see what she's doing with her people try, If people try so to touch Pinky shit, we're going to beat you the fuck up. That's what I'm saying. Tell me about when they when they stood up in front of Waffle House and they should have protected the but they, they, they No, but, sis, but they came back and sold that Waffle House up. Okay, I'm so talking about what way. I seen okay. on camera. So it was a joke. They should have had black owned so business like on. they let did Waffle House. Exactly. I agree. Let me provide last Saturday, the organization I belong to, Let Us Make Man. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So uh, and it was in the news, 11 Alive, uh, uh, attorney Molly Davis of the Davis Bozeman Law Firm, Derek Bozeman, one of the other founders of Let Us Make Man, as several other groups, we all got together when we got news that the looting was going to be headed over to to, um, to Camp Creek. Mm-hmm. And so they organized and we set up mm-hmm. in, over there in front of Target. Now, here's what we were absolutely 1,000% clear on. We said it in the new, news media. We said it this morning in some of the interviews. We wasn't there to protect Target. Mm. We set up right outside that store because we knew that that store was going to be a source of focus. And here's what Mm -hmm. we said is that we saw that damn army Mm -hmm. of officers who were salivating, Mm -hmm. waiting. Like Mm -hmm. I told you, they were like lions in the brush watching the lambs feast. And we knew that. So we got out there with those shirts that said we love y'all too much. We were out there because we had to tell the young people, look. And we engaged them, brought them over to eat and did everything Mm -hmm. else. And we had to have the conversation and we had to do what they call in the clinical world de-escalation. We had to de-escalate. And some came ready, but we had to engage in a de-escalation because we knew what was over there. Mm -hmm. So they saw it downtown in Cap Creek, East Point, that whole, they were waiting, and it never happened. Yeah. It, it never happened. Was this a matter? We, we're we not, if, if Target said to us, I want to thank you all, we would have said, for what? Mm-hmm. We literally would have said, for what? But we knew that those young black men were being targeted. Mm-hmm. So one of, but again, within the context of a rebellion, y'all, that's why I'm saying don't get lost. Yes. Within the context yes. of yes. a rebellion, yes. all this shit, Period. Happens. So you Period. Stay focused. You, you Period. see what I'm saying? That's Period. why I'm saying don't. Casualties. That's why I'm saying the challenge of calling this a protest and mass protests all over. That actually, that word mass protests um, is, com- I'm saying within the context of this is inherently flawed. It's a national, which has become an international rebellion. And that's yes. what it is. And within yes. the context of this yes. rebellion, all of this happens. Yep. There are three ways to change an administration. Talk speak, to us. Speak to right? us. There's three us. ways. The Either one, one, you're going to woo them. Mm. And woo them means that we're going to give them accolades. accolades. Mm-hmm. We're going to tell you all are great. We're going to tell you that you've made a difference. And, un- and then hopefully, yes, and then hopefully you be my interpreter. And then with hopefully, yeah. <laughs> within the context of all that yeah. wooing, you are moved to really recognize our mm-hmm. pain and address our pain. Mm-hmm. That's number one. Number two is to buy them. Mm-hmm. And to buy them, that means, guess what? I'm going to use my financial and my economic power to lock mm-hmm. you out, to starve you, to overthrow you. Well, hell, mm-hmm. if we had the ability to buy them, o- open then your we, purse. Wouldn't, yeah. we wouldn't be able to do this. Yeah. O- open your purse. Yeah. And the third way is to fight them. Mm-hmm. And to fight them simply says that we're going to have a rebellion, that we're going to demonstrate that there's a direct, mm-hmm. for every action, yeah. there's a direct reaction. Mm-hmm. Now, the yeah, problem is, is that mm-hmm. depending on the action that you engage, in mm-hmm. and the fighting is going to dictate how big the reaction mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. And so some actions, if you engage in the same action mm-hmm. over and over and over mm-hmm. again, then you've messed around and started a rebellion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're in the midst of a rebellion. So I'm telling everybody, if y'all watching this, if you tuned in, I'm telling everybody it's a rebellion. It's a yeah. rebellion. It's a rebellion. This ain't no goddamn. We just got some protesting yeah. going on. Yeah. The protesting yeah. Yeah. is one of the mechanisms uh-huh. within the rebellion. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. 
getting the uh, police department to instantly charge people. Uh -huh. These are some of the immediate mm -hmm. outcomes yeah. of a rebellion. Of a rebellion. Right? So I don't give a shit about a chief bending on his knee and, mm -hmm. and taking a knee with us and, mm -hmm. and marching yeah. in the Black Lives Matter. Yep. So tell so, me who your goddamn recruiters are. Yeah. So tell yeah. me who recruited. Watch this. Tell me who recruited them. Tell yeah. me um, those officers. Y'all know. Y'all know my brother is a police officer yeah. in the San Francisco, Oakland Bay Area. Mm. One of the things that he told me um, in the early days, he said, you know, the one of the things that we had to do in, in, in this municipality in the Bay Area, he said whenever there was a call, black officers would have to race to the scene. Mm. 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 And if we were too late, then that suspect, if he was black, he'd been beat up. And then they say he resisted. Mm -hmm. So black officers inside the police department, those who had that level of consciousness, mm -hmm. they had to communicate on the back channel. Y'all mm -hmm. need to get there. Mm -hmm. So it's not that our, a lot of these officers don't know what's going on, but the challenge is that as some of them began to move up, right. they shared their level of individual and right. community and collective consciousness right. in exchange for this uniform right. consciousness. And then they start saying, we. Right. Mm. So, no, wait, I'm so wait, one one second, because you just brought up a good point. Black police officers. Yeah, it, and one thing that I've been continuously telling these black police officers that I see out there during these during this uprising and rebellion that we're witnessing is that y'all black police officers, these white officers should be scared of y'all. These white officers should be scared to disrespect and brutalize and kill to... black people in the street because they should it it shouldn't even they should be so worried to have to go back to the office to have to even look their other black officer co-workers in the face. After you, choose, like Crystal, you know what Crystal, I'm saying? Crystal Smith? Yeah. And, uh, the, the, uh, what was she, uh, she and Sol were actually, she checked the man when he, um, when he pushed him. Oh, she did girl. that. Is that the picture? No, in Broward County. No, 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 no. Right, the video. Yes, the video. Yeah. The video. Well, I saw the picture first. Hold on, what happened? Where the officer had knocked down a lady. She and was on, she was yeah. on her knees. On her knees. She, the girl was on her knees and the white officer, he came by and he pushed her and she checked, she checked the officer. They were like under a bridge or something? And yeah. the black yeah. officer came over immediately and just started pushing him away. It was cursing him out. People were throwing water bottles at him. Yeah, that that's the happen. And that was in Broward so, County. So, the police so, started checking them. So watch what's so amazing about this. Because the same unjust system that we're talking about, yeah. it's similar to microcosm of that inside the police department. Yes. Yes. So as they move up, right, and then that system, that, that same, like the system outside here we're talking about, inside the police force, right. it's the same exact thing. I'm saying I want to charge those captains and those lieutenants yeah, and yeah. those chiefs yeah. who are black yeah. and those white ones who claim to be conscious and have a level of yeah. sensitivity. I'm simply saying that some of your folks need yeah. to be retrained. Yeah. They need to have another psychological yeah. evaluation that is done. Because why y'all like seeing what happened to George Floyd? You know, he, he got killed with a knee on, a knee on his neck. Why is that still happening to other black men? Another video went viral and they said yep. this don't work here. So that mean if everyone is putting their knee on someone neck, that mean that y'all are getting trained to do this. Something isn't right. A actually, and it's not just getting trained, trained. They're just using unnecessary force. A actually, it came out that that was actually an illegal maneuver that they that that he did, and it wasn't in the company policy. It wasn't in the, the that precinct's policy. So that was just it. Just adds another level of fucked up to what happened because you you this is not something that you're trained to do. Right. Like what the what's the point of training? What's the point of training? And this mm -hmm. is something that we talked about before y'all got here. It's like I believe and we we believe that the barrier of entry to be a police officer is way too low. Just, of course, it, you can of be course. a police. Six you can months, be you can course, be a police yeah. officer in less than a year. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why you had these dudes who had already a very fragile male ego. Mm -hmm. You already had these dudes who already had no street cred, and then they get this badge, and now mm -hmm. it's them against the world. They fucking Robocop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it's it's, yeah. Like, it's yeah. like, and I, and I believe like you would you would think that the best way to 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 fix policing is like the automated, but like you can't even you can't even have automated police. You can't even have robot police because it's going. It's a life or death situation in every situation they're in. You can't. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you have there. There's a level of humanity involved 
in policing. So when they say, oh, I fear for my life, a part of me gets it, but another part of me feels like you, there should be training for that. It, you shouldn't approach every Always on traffic when stop you, when like this. Always but on it shows you. it's not even fear because you thought they was going to kill you. You was fear because you just scared of black people. Just like the you, just, you just fucking you just, scared. You're weak. You're weak. We You're don't scared. Have like this and we don't have the complexion for the protection. I'm telling everybody out there um, uh, who's watching to do your homework, Google, uh, but put .gov at the end of, uh, of your Google search. And I want you to look at the number of, of people that are killed by white officers compared to black officers. Mm. And when you see that incredible disparity, then you begin to develop your questions around why is that. Right. But, because, e but, but even to that effect, we saw them walk Dylan Roof out unharmed. And gave him yeah. something to drink. White it, officers. It, it was another, and it was another guy that killed like 23 people. We saw them walk him out unarmed. Yeah. You killed George Floyd over an alleged fake $20 bill? $20. But you that's kill, not why you, they killed you, him. You killed Eric you Gardner on it's paper. because he was black, yeah. Eric Gardner. Loose six? What? Mm. You talking about murder. Multiple people. These guys are killing multiple people and they get walked out. For the same thing that white people are so, sitting around just laughing about. White man said he when he when he tried to pay for a counterfeit to he it's something he could laugh about. Right. I've yeah. seen that post. No, like, and literally Yeah, and I was just telling Corey in the car before we came over here, the same thing that they'll let a white man walk away for, they will kill a black person in the street worse than a dog. That same exact thing. And, and they'll I'm leave black, you in the street. Yeah, and they'll leave you hours. in the street. And you know what is so interesting? I was just standing in solidarity with the black mothers in Atlanta yesterday whose sons and daughters have been slain in this city by police in Atlanta, Georgia. And one of the things that the mother, it just broke my heart to hear her say, they did her baby so wrong, she ended up getting to the hospital before her damn son. Mm. Her son was still dying in the street and she was in the hospital and they had her locked in the room, wouldn't give her no information and her child is still dying in the street. And so at the end of the day, our kids are being done wrong, our parents, our everybody is being done wrong. Just like you said when you made the distinction between you know how many black officers are killing and how many white officers are killing we also have to understand that one thing that our people are trying to do a lot of our people are trying to distract the conversation with looting and a lot of our people are trying to distract the conversation especially people who said it from the hood oh i'm from the hood and black people been killing each other for forever and we ain't talking about that right and now I'm there's no such thing as black on and black I, and crime. I'm, I'm glad you said that because yes. i was about to i was about to uh segue into that so when people um, bring up the black on black crime. Uh, I'm gonna start with you, Dr. White. What is Hold what on. is your what is your immediate reaction when you hear people try to bring up that conversation in times like this? Well, black on, again, it's a distraction. Distraction. And um, black on black crime ain't no different than white on white crime, Asian and Asian no crime. No different. Recent, crime I mean, is crime. You hold you hold a master's in criminal justice I administration. Do. So I, I just so, wanted to so, know. So you absolutely know um, that um, um, intergroup. Crime is going to be uh, higher. Is, is, yes. It's always yes. higher. But again, the question is, who, you know, where do we point the camera? Yeah. And so all of a sudden, because see, black on black crime is a tagline. Right. It's sort of like if it don't fit, you must acquit. Right. Mm -hmm. And so there's certain things mm. that has a rhythm to it. And so because it has a certain rhythm to it, then we began to it build becomes a, a thing. whole thing around it. So let's deal with black on black crime. Y'all dealing with all that? Y'all need to deal with some of the black on black crime. But you so didn't deal with it. Well, the, well, the point is, I'm saying is, don't even get, lo don't even get lost on that because right, black exactly. on black crime is literally not that different than white on white crime. Exactly. Right. Yeah. My, what I'm saying. So that's me. Yeah. What I'm saying is, it's getting dealt with. No one is saying that black and black crime isn't, but that's not what we're talking about now. Because right, when I agree. when Rodney kills JJ, Rodney goes to jail. Exactly. But when but when John kills JJ, Rodney don't. I mean, uh, John don't go to jail. That's exactly. what, that's the problem, and that's what the problem is with people saying. All lives matter. We're yeah. not saying all, all lives don't matter, but all lives is not at stake right now. Right. It's black lives that's at stake yeah. right now. Yeah. So I was I was over listening to I'm not even gonna say the person name, but he was on the phone with the, his white friend, white childhood friend, and they're grown. He was like that. The white dude was like, I I don't know what white privilege is. I just don't know. Maybe I'm not saying. Yes, you do. Just because you probably because not doing it, life. he don't you know he what it is. You. Regardless of if you think that you're getting the privilege, you know what it is. Yeah. You you know what it is. And he was just like, I mean, well, white people get killed too. 
And then my the person who said I was the person who said it, he was like, okay, so white people are getting killed, but what do they have to do to get killed? Because we rarely see it. So what instead do they have to go to actually get killed? And like, I think okay, like, yeah. like, just because we're focusing on yeah. Black Lives Matter doesn't mean that we're disregarding exactly. everything else. That's exactly. Like I've seen something like, for example, Breast Cancer Month. Just because we have breast cancer month, that's not saying that we're just disregarding all other cancer. Right. No, this is just something that we're focusing right. on right, right now that we're trying to tackle. Right. And I think that's what people need to understand. We're not disregarding Asians, Latinos, mm-hmm. white, Caucasians, any of that. We're mm-hmm. just saying right now, at this moment, black lives need to matter because black lives aren't mattering right now. Right. And that's something exactly. that people just right. need to understand. And when yeah. you say all lives, when you're preaching all lives matter when we're saying black that's like a protest to our protest or to our rebellion should i say that's like mm-hmm. why are you saying that during this time like yeah, that yeah. has nothing to do with nothing what they say yeah. if all lives matter then why you not mad exactly, exactly. why you not mad <laughs> and another thing that i definitely <laughs> want to add because when it comes to the whole black on black concept that isn't even true because it's a fact that white people kill more white people than black people kill black people mm. and let me tell you something black people may kill black people in the hood but white people kill everybody they walk up in our churches. They right. walk up in our schools. They walk up in our our, our grocery stores, and they add that thing our, out. Our movie they add that thing movie. out I haven't on been, everybody. I haven't, I haven't been comfortable in the movie theater since what happened in. Um, Man, you know, I ain't comfortable yeah. nowhere. Colorado, I ain't Colorado. comfortable in my bed. I ain't comfortable walking down the street. I'm not even comfortable I ain't at the comfortable protest, nowhere. But I'm out there. Exactly. In any given day, they can come spray up the protest. Right. The exactly. All of that. That's the beautiful part about. I mean, I'm gonna tell you all right now. I am. Um, as a professor, some of y'all professors and everything, I'm, I just love this. I mean, you all, your, your voices, mm. I want them louder, and mm. I want them louder. Mm. And any professor that's remotely around mm. my age or younger mm. who is a professor, and if he or she is looking at y'all oddly in any mm-hmm. shape, form, or fashion, mm-hmm. understand, all you need to do is pull their Rodney King card and say, Period. You yeah, and and and, the, and the, because in our youth, we we did those things. Yes, too. The only difference is that in our youth, we waited for the verdict. Yeah, and your youth yeah. said we ain't no, waiting. We don't we know. Tied up. So we tired tied up. Of being tired. Because we've seen the verdict right. not go our way so many times. And they times. didn't even get and, tried. And and they they wasn't gonna try those officers. And, and it's what I'm admiring. That's what yeah. I'm telling you all. Is what we are definitely admiring in terms of. Um, um, the fact that you all have the ability to take that intelligence of yeah. yours, these degrees of y'all, yeah. right? I'm just sitting around and I'm looking at you all, and mm. you have the ability to take that. That means that you can articulate it yeah. here, and then you can walk it on the street. Yeah. And if you need to act a fool, you also possess that. And I'm telling yeah. you, just as you have a an actor who can sing and mm-hmm. who can play an instrument mm-hmm. and he can act, and they said mm-hmm. that's the, the trifecta, I'm saying you all are the trifecta of our time because mm-hmm. you are intelligent, mm-hmm. you have the ability to protest, and you possess the ability to act a fool simultaneously. So the truth of the matter is you all are far more dangerous mm-hmm. than we were. We uh, possessed that, mm. but I'm telling you right now, but the difference mm. is y'all didn't wait. Mm. And so, yes, your voices and everything about it, and, you know, seeing students organize and protest, and, 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 and again, the intelligent thing is, because this is the, the added burden I'm putting on you, you scholars. When y'all are out there and folks are on the news, I need y'all to work to add to put this shit in context. Mm-hmm. To say, guess what? Just like they did during the 60s, mm-hmm. during this. Just as they did during yep. the uprising, during yep. the, there is nothing yep. different. And then I need y'all to expand it a little yep. bit more. And just as when they did that in China, yep. and the President of the United States, he mm-hmm. applauded the citizens mm-hmm. of China who was uprising against the, the government. Yep. And just as in Iran when yep. they did that, and our government mm-hmm. applauded the people in Iran for uprising against Mm-hmm. the government so this is no different when y'all start doing yeah. that so what i'm telling you you yeah. you young folks yeah. uh, you scholars yeah you you act you scholar activists yes. what i'm telling y'all is that when you when they put that mic in front of you mm-hmm. i'm going to tell you right now i need manage the emotion give me the emotion mm-hmm. but i'm going to tell y'all simultaneously then drop that put that shit in a historical context okay, yeah. and when you put it in the historical I, I don't care if y'all Y'all get the script together. Mm-hmm. I want y'all to have the script to put this shit yeah. in a historical context yeah. so then they all understand yeah. we ain't doing nothing new. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what you said that you know what that 
the, the, the same night that Keisha came out on national television denouncing black protesters in the same city that 30 years ago, at Ace Atlanta was doing the same thing. The same night, Stacey Abrams, I love how she got on Twitter and she told the story about, she said, she, she started the tweet off so calmly, so beautifully. She said, this is all too familiar. The same night in 1992, when that verdict was read, riots broke out in Atlanta too. It wasn't just LA. And Stacey Abrams was a student at Spelman College. So these are the type of leaders that we need. And it's a shame that Stacey Abram had her campaign stolen from her by Governor Brian yeah. Kemp because that's the type of rhetoric that I would love to hear from the people who are supposed to be leading our community is understanding and allowing us to realize that this is connecting with history. And I love the fact that, you know, I've been blessed to have educators in my life like Dr. White and, and, and his amazing wife, Dr. White. And then you got Dr. Bass and his amazing wife. Dr. Bass. And, and then you have Professor Davis in the AUC. I mean, it's a blessing that I've been able to be surrounded by you guys because everything you're saying with relating it to historical contests, mm -hmm. that's been my main point. We got to understand this ain't new, but what this is, this is our first rebellion in our generation. So the reason why I don't like that our people are being a little too critical of the way it's being done sometimes is that this is our first child. Give us a little, you know. Well, well, give us a, again, you know? I'm going to give you this though. Put it in his, the people yeah. who are being critical to you, I'm telling you, I'm giving you your strategy for right. that generation who's being a little too critical. And that's why I'm telling y'all, put that shit in historical context. Yes. And for some of them, yes. you, and for the, some of them, yes. I want you to take it another step further. I want you all to take a few seconds and pay particular attention yeah. to what happened in Atlanta, Georgia. And if you were in Minnesota, what happened then? Or wherever you were in the country, I need you all to study what happened in 1992 mm -hmm. at, with the Rodney King riot. I want you all to say that in this city here doing that riot, yep. it cost it this was the economic yep. impact. This is what it, I want you all to put it in context. And I'm right. telling you all, anyone who is critical of you all, yeah. Anyone who is critical of you all, right. I'm telling you, the usage of, we call it historicism, the right. usage of historicism, when you put that shit in the historical context, mm -hmm. it's going to back up everybody, yeah. especially those who have gotten so old that they no longer remember their youth, right? right? So I'm going to tell you, uh, uh, this rebellion and, 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 and all these real rebellions that are ongoing is what makes it a revolution. Yes. And a revolution means to revolve. Yes. It, it constantly changes. It never ends. Yeah. It yeah. just has these different uh, circular yes. motions. But what I'm saying and what I need you all to do right now yeah. is I'm just saying put it in historical context when you all are, are, are talking yeah. about it. And some of those... Yeah. Some of those, you might even look out and see, well, where the hell were they at in 92? Mm. So you can raise the, the, yeah. the, the, the question. And yeah. when you do that, for the folks who are complaining about your yeah. methods, now, there's a truthful part of this, too, now. There are, there, you, 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 you do have to study some of the strategies. Right. If you're not King, right. and, and you're not Huey Newton, right. if you're not Marcus Garvey, right. if you're not Malcolm X, well, then, hell, what we do know is don't make the shit up. Right. Somebody among all these movements yes. and these rebellions that you can study. I don't care. Yeah. Go all the way back to Nat Turner. Right. Cross the seas right. and, 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 and study right. what worked. You you do right. need to kind of add that, that piece because your, your oppressor understands yeah. this. You, right now your oppressor is saying, whatever we need to do yeah. to calm y'all down, we, we will. Do. Because here's what we know. This yeah. is what their history teaches us about y'all. Yeah. Their history teaches us about you all is that you're highly emotional. Mm -hmm. And once they get up your emotions down, you're going to go back to normal. Mm -hmm. So our goal right now is not to appease you, but to give you whatever mm -hmm. you need to do to get your emotions down. And yeah. once your emotions go down, y'all going to go back to doing the same old shit that you were doing. Yeah. And that yeah. is, that's, that's their fundamental premise. So that's their motivation behind everything. Right. What make it frightening if yes. they start saying, you know what, I don't think, I think if their emotions go down, I, I, I think now we have to do something because, yeah. you know, their emotions go down, they still yeah. going to act a fool. Yeah. Y'all yeah. with me? But yeah. right now, it's one about all the research says is that when you all calm down, 
Yeah. You're going to go back to normal. Yeah. So do you think the distractions are on the way? Wait, one second, one second. One thing that's very important about what's going on right now, right? So when it comes to the fact that insurance companies have never had to pay out for black lives being lost at the hands of the police, because the real problem in a lot of our black communities is that a lot of us are walking around here uninsured. So most times, our people are, I mean, the insurance companies are not even having to come out of their pockets when go. this is happening. So right now, people go. are having to pay for black lives being lost. Right now, people are having to answer. And so I love what you said because you know, um, Friday was my first protest I've ever been able to be in because it just so happens, I don't know, all these things usually happen during the summertime. So I've always had to be at, at work. I, everybody know I used to work in Wendy's back in the day, Top mm -hmm. Golf back in the day. So I always have a summer job. So I'm never able to go to a protest. Friday was my first protest. And at first I was mad because I said, hold, I got out there at 530. I said, well, where everybody at? It should be millions of people in the city oh, like you I came to the protest I, early. I came a little early, but I didn't know I thought I was late. I thought I was late. I said, hold on. And so That's my the one protest? No, it was it was the no, one, it was the one, one was earlier where there. it was like speeches and yeah, things like okay. that. And so either way, so later on that night, then we start marching. Then we march in, get on the highway, then we get off the highway, then we march in, and it's going down in front of the CNN Center. So either way. When we start to think about, you know, the trauma that is going on through these protests, because I've been on Instagram live only because, God forbid something happened to me, all y'all niggas watching can call the police too. <laughs> and so at the end of the day, somebody, at least somebody saw me Free minutes Marquino. before. <laughs> you know, something, 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 Jesus. All of this got to be documented because they want us to not have any... All of these things that are being documented are great, and we have to document as much as possible because they want us to have no proof. They want yeah. us to have no history. But the important thing is that either way, all of this that's going on, one of the important things is that, to me personally, after being out in the protest, after experiencing, on that that night ended with somebody throwing random gunshots in the air. At the time, nobody knew where the gunshots were coming from. We don't know if they're coming from the police. We don't know if they're coming from a white supremacist. We don't know if they're coming from both. And mm -hmm. so at that point, I'm just like, oh shoot. So I, I, just, I, I just ran behind a car. I had to duck. And so at one point, literally before the shooting stopped, I was like, oh my God, this could be a mass shooting. And so the fact that we're even having to experience that trauma just fighting for the justice of our lives and then to be honest with you I'm scaring like 95% of my family they're all out here on my live like go home what are you doing what are you doing you're crazy you're this you're this you're doing this you're doing that yeah. let me tell you something I told my interns today because I'm the, I'm executive program director I told them today because I can't talk to anybody that I that I can't talk to HBCU students that work under me in this time without talking about what's it going on That's it doesn't problem. matter what we talking about, we have to acknowledge this first because just like Dr. White said, this is a rebellion, it is an uprising. And I'm sure to tell my students that today. It's very important that we realize that what's going on right now I say I'm scaring my family because the night of the protest, I mean, my mama scared me the way she was cursing me out. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, well, dang. Like, And so at the end of the day, you know, I say all this to say, transparently speaking, I do not have a good relationship with my father. We haven't had a regular conversation since probably I was like 10, 11 years old because every conversation we have is an argument. And so, of course, now that I'm grown, I'm learning how to see my parents as human beings and, you know, understanding how to navigate conversations without arguments and I did it for the first time last night. Either way, I was very surprised that, you know, after seeing the things I've been doing, my dad hasn't called me. And I said that on the phone with my sister and it coincidentally, she went downstairs and he was in the building. And um, and I was just like, dang, daddy ain't even called me. And he didn't know I was on the phone. And he was just like, dang, Jennifer, I got to call your sister. He was just like, he was just like, he was just like, you know, she get that from me. She get that from me. She get, I was like, I get what from who? And he was just like, no, Marquina, I'm telling you. Like, well, I seen you doing something out there. You so positive. You in those police face. I used to be like that in Haiti. I used to be demanding justice like that in Haiti. He telling me how proud he was of me. And let me tell you something. I have never in my life mm. heard my father say that mm. he was proud of me. Mm. Never in my life. Mm. And so for the fact that even though I scared the hell out of my mother, almost gave her a heart attack in her, in her own words, I got to make my mother proud this summer with a degree, and I guess I got to make my daddy proud this summer with protesting. There we go. It's, you, you know, know we're, we're uh, rebellion. And, and hold on, but Dr. White, you gotta, you gotta go, so I'm gonna let you Say what you say. No, what you, I'm, give I'm, your your final statement. No, I just want to say that um, you know the beautiful thing about parents is that we you know there was no manual. Yeah. So many of us are screwed up and and, and messed up trying to figure it out and, mm. and get it right. But again, 
So what is this telling you all? Not everything is terrible that has happened. Yeah. Um, there's some beautiful things that is unfolding yeah. as a result of this. The work mm -hmm. I've been doing around quarantining, for example, right. I've been raising the question that if you've been quarantined with your family for these 10, 12 uh, uh, weeks or months, mm -hmm. and I've been saying that by the time this quarantine is over, if your family is not stronger right. after this, if right. your family not communicating right. better than this, right. if the relationship with your sibling is right. not stronger so than it true, was, so true. Your relationship with your daddy or your mom yes. ain't better than right. then it was all for naught. Mm, yeah. So the truth of the matter is there is some positive things that right. needs to happen. Mm -hmm. Now I will say this about every movement. Mm -hmm. the, my universal mantra has always been start with myself, then the family, cover the block onto the community. Let me say that again. Start with myself, then the family, cover the block yes. onto the community. Yes. And what yes. I'm saying is that deal yes. with your own, you have to deal with your own emotional yes. and, 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 uh, and psychological mm -hmm. well-being because you can't, if you're no good for yourself, remember, mm. start with myself, then the family, yes. then you're no good for your family. Yes. But here, I'm going to say this too, is that if you have a strained family, mm -hmm. but yet you are making a difference in the community and everybody in the community love you, but your daddy or your daughter, or your siblings, or mm -hmm. your family hate you, then I'm telling you, guess what? The protest and the movement will be okay. Work on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And But the truth of the matter is, is that it's harder. Sometimes Some people would rather be out in a protest getting hit with rubber bullets right. than to be home with their family and yeah. say, I was wrong, or yeah. let's fix this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So for me, one of the highlights of this entire conversation that I've had in this short time that I literally almost teared up is when Marquina said, this has been the historic relationship I've had with my father. And when he said he was proud of me mm -hmm. over protesting, mm. and then he reveals something, that meant there's a whole lot of shit that he ain't got right. Mm -hmm. But in the midst of that, we know that there's one, two very significant things that this man did that has been the greatest contribution to human society. And one of those things is producing her. Thank you. Y'all with me? That's one. And then number two, that moment that just happened. Because what needs to happen in the midst mm -hmm. of this movement, I just told y'all about the importance of historicism, right? I said, study the history. So guess what? She needs to study and have a conversation with him about Haiti. Why? Because when they put the cameras oh, in front yeah. of Marquina, then she used to say, and in Haiti, my father and this movement yeah. is what we did. Yeah. Usage of historicism. Y'all with me? Yeah. So I'm just saying I need y'all to take them degrees yeah. and all that knowledge. And I'm saying when they put that mic in front of you, and I'm going to tell you to get in front of the mic. Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you right now, that cameraman is going to try to find the most ignorant, yeah. uninformed, oh, yeah. illiterate oh, yeah. individual. Uh -huh. And oh, yeah. I'm simply saying is that every time they put up yeah. a mic, I want you to get in front of the mic yeah. and I need you to drop the mic. Yeah. That's what what? What? Wait, wait, but, what? but with the Haiti thing, you already know how I'm moving about being Haitian. You already know how I'm moving about having the rebellion blood in me that was responsible for the mm -hmm. first successful black revolution in our history. You see me out there on the first day, you know I had the Haitian flag around my neck proudly because as our people, one of the biggest things that we have to address very quickly, and I want you to be in the room real quick, is that there is a gap in this community from from there is a gap between the older community leaders of the older generation and the and the younger group of community leaders well, who, who right now is? no but that's the thing they're in the communities and they're working we just need to have intentionality behind bringing those two and bridging them together yep. so that they can start guiding us and we can start giving them our tea they give us our tea and then we bring it together and that's how we have power yeah, and, within and also real quick I also believe we need we need to like, I feel like in the social media age, we need to stop trying to chop down anybody who wants to come up and speak and be the voice of the community if they're yeah. mostly on a positive route. Because I feel like people tried to kill T.I. for what he said Yo, over, the, over the weekend. Like, he, maybe the kind of thing was a, bit, was a bit far, but telling people to not destroy where they live... It, no, it's, bro, it's, it's the accountability piece. He didn't take accountability of the reason why people were protesting and rioting true, so and, true. And, and rebelling. True, and, but true, you know. and true. Let's let's fix that. But not don't 
throw T.I. away. So I saw T.I. on a lot of people's cancel list. Yeah, I don't think we should. Yeah, I don't think we should. See, I've spoken no, a lot God, of No, God, listen, let me say this. Topics. Let me say this before I go. He, they no, are, we, we're all about to do it. We got okay. we, t- Scream say I talk too much. Wait, hold on. Wait, not, not. A speaker, uh, yeah. they're not the, a leader and not the leader. And so I don't have a problem with T.I. and Killer Mike. I don't have the, I don't have a problem with that. Our challenge is yeah. if we make them the leader as opposed to a leader. Right. And, and, and guess what? I am going to expect you to use your celebrity. Right. I am. Hello. But I'm just, you know, for me, I'm just simply saying I need you all to apply the usage of historicism. I yes. need you all. And I'm going to say this in closing for me, yeah. is that the point that you just made, um, if you all are paying attention, I need everyone to log on to the Davis Bozeman Law Firm, yes, love or him. I need you to log on to the mm-hmm. Black Man Lab, mm-hmm. or I need you to log on to Let Us Make Man, because yes. the very thing that uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Marquina just laid out is that what we are about to do on this Sunday, getting young people together yeah. and talk about some specific strategies and things to do in the midst of your protests as you all acknowledge this rebellion. So log on to the Davis Bozeman Law yes. Firm, the Black Man Lab, or yes. Let Us Make Man, so you can see exactly what it is that um, that yes. we're doing. We are not trying to get no young folks to Let Us Make Man, for example. Hell, about we got about 10 attorneys in Let Us Make Man. Yeah. Along with the therapists. They're going to get you out. And everything yeah. They're going to get you out. So, yeah. so I'm just simply saying that take advantage of it. Yeah. Yeah. Take advantage of it and learn what it is that we're doing. Yeah. So I love y'all, and um, I'm excited that Brian yeah. even called me down here. And we need to partner. I mean, Kodak, I'm we sorry. need to partner. The most important thing that people need to do right now that we need to understand is that we need to take this energy to the polls. I love what you just mentioned yeah. about what y'all are doing this weekend because I was just talking to Corey, you know, along with my organization, Breaking the Cycle, and a couple of the other, you know, ground workers that I've been um a part of this rebellion with. We're going to be having um, a community prayer and planning and peaceful march to the city hall because we need all of that. And it's going to be an AU, an Atlanta unit an Atlanta University Center for Justice, community there. prayer, yeah. community um, planning, c- community peaceful march, because that is the roots of where we came from. So I, so at the end of the day, but uh, another thing, we need to keep this same energy and take it to the polls. Y'all, yes. can, can, Greeks, can I say something real quick? Greeks, let me tell y'all something. Greek organizations do a very smart thing in HBCUs, and I can only speak on HBCUs because I go to HBCUs. When it comes time to election time, they gonna have conversations about who they need to put up to be an SGA and royal court. And that should be the same thing that our black community is doing within our community of black leaders. We need to be encouraging our classmates that we recognize leadership skills and to go for government leadership. I just told Corey in the car, I said, I know you're gonna run for something. Mm -hmm. Like at the and we have to empower we have to empower our people because just like I said we don't just need black faces in high places we need to be intentionally putting our people up with our interests so that we can be overflowing and literally overly infiltrating the system we shouldn't have to be choosing in between the lesser of two evils when it comes to our city councils or our mayors or our state representatives we should be actively engaged and not even knowing who to choose it should be so good mm-hmm. I mean we should be like, oh my gosh, this person this person's talking about police brutality. This person's talking about homelessness and poverty. This person's talking about that. Who, who, who do we choose? But we haven't had that. We haven't had that in this lifetime and we need as a young people, as a young community, we need to come together and we need to understand that it is time to unify and strategize. Right now, just like Dr. White said, we are in the reactionary period, but it is time that we unify and strategize and understand that all this energy we got, the only thing that we have immediate power of right now is many things, but most importantly I would say right now in our power is voting. Mm. We need to do yeah. research on our local elections. That is what matters. There are state representatives in the um, in the city of Atlanta right now who are working tirelessly to bring these families justice who, um, who, who, who kids have been killed or family members have been killed. So research who is running in your local cities and states and understand that it is our responsibility to educate ourselves so that we can take this energy and put it to use. Let's over infiltrate the system with black interests and not just black faces in high places. June 9th. Go Boom. June 9th. Listen, June 9th. Can I, June can I 9th. ask this question? Um, what will we, because you mentioned going back to normal. What will we be doing? Are we going to go back to normal or are we going to keep going like with this as far as like 
educating ourselves financially. Because I feel mm-hmm. like that's what we need because we lack capital. That's what mm-hmm. you all are going to have to do. I feel like yeah, that's what we, we have need to. We got to do the whole even thing. If we, we go into it, it with, with yeah. um, Mr. George Floyd, what did he get? Uh, what did the police come from for? Right. Because of the, the money, the money right. situation. So if we had our own stuff, right. we, I feel like that's something yeah, that we need yeah, to be educated yeah, on. Yeah. And we don't need to just go back to normal right. and start right. going back yeah. doing right that now, stuff. We need every, to get our stores. Yeah. We need Grocery to get our stores. Gro- salons. Yeah. Everything. We need a whole plan. We need to just, utilize. Because right. I know me, I major in accounting, so I'm, you know, I'm going to be an accountant. So I'm not the one thing. I'm trying to teach financial freedom. So we need to bring those people. We got people in political science. Exactly. But we also need those black accountants. If you look up the statistics of how many people are in jail, 75% are in jail for lack of money. Because you, they, don't you, have the they don't have the money. If, for robbing people, they don't have the money, and it's our people. 75% are in jail, our, our people, for the lack of money. In this it's rebellion, we need all the roles. We is. need the we need politicians. Everything. We need the hairstylists to keep us looking good while we are here. When they said, when they said at the, like, uh, when the coronavirus thing, people talked about a new normal, I think that's really what it is turning out to be. We're not going to go back to it. We can't. That's that what be, this rebellion that, has that taken be, over the coronavirus. Yes. Yeah. This rebellion has made people it forget that there was a coronavirus we, we even out here. We go back to it's, like, it's, 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 it's a new norm getting created at this point. It's a new black norm getting created. Yeah. Yeah, and, they don't and, need and to be like, oh, we're going to bring them out. They're going to go back. No, we're not. Because the coronavirus is like, yeah, take off them gloves, take off them masks. Yeah. I, I, no, but that's what the government is saying. That's what the government. Oh, you think they ain't? Oh, you know they happy that we just out here letting it go. We out here. That, they. You know what? At the end of the day, I think it's very interesting that at the beginning of, with all the corona stuff, everybody was just like, dang, how are we going to get back to normal? How are we going to get back to normal? How are people going to be around people again? And then we rush outside. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna end it. I'm gonna end it on this because we gotta. We going protest and we hitting the city. Yeah, we downtown Atlanta. Yeah, we definitely. And I, and I gotta get back. Atlanta, I got, yeah. My protest day is tomorrow. So uh, yeah, we out um, with it. We, we gonna say this just for George Floyd, just for, for um. Jamarion Robinson. Jamarion Robinson. Brianna, what's the last? Brianna Taylor. Brianna Sandra Taylor Brand. and every every other black person. Yeah. I'm gonna be specific about that. People say people of color, br- black and brown, black, black people. Black because people. Because that's what it's happening to. Yeah. Just for everybody, black killed by the system. Um. Anything else? Go out and vote. June 9th. Go June 9th. And yes. Um, and, yes. Um, fuck, vote. Fuck the police. And we're going to end it like <laughs> that. Uh, big Homie Sides is episode 18. Yo, Big Homie. Shout out to Marquina. Shout out to Corey. <laughs> shout out to Big Homie Dr. Gary White. Shout out to Big Homie Butter. We're in the building. Big Homie shit. <laughs>